Affordable Housing Trust for Thursday, December 5th at 3 p.m. Um, first call for any public comments. To uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Elaine Shufflin, but I am not here representing real estate and open space at the moment. Uh, I just like to add some information. I know you're all trying to put a face faces to the folks that are looking for affordable housing. And I have spoken to several members of the Coast Guard Station Chatham. And here's another group of folks who cannot afford to find rental housing here on the Cape. Um, there are houses off Depot Road uh, which are housed, but they give priority to families. And those eight houses have to be shared between the staff at Provincetown and Chatham. So we're talking over 50 individuals plus families, so eight houses doesn't go far. Uh, one incident is a, a Coast Guardman from California who f knew six months ahead of time he was going to be stationed in Chatham and through real estate and online real estate and everything else, couldn't find anything he could afford of five and in the end was forced to actually buy a house even though he's only going to be stationed here for three years and you know when you resell your house after three years you're taking a loss uh, some of the single fellas wind up finding a spot somewhere share, but between their their pay and their subsidy government subsidy for housing uh, it's a pretty tight market for them so when you look to say, not only are we trying to find homes for healthcare workers and teachers and firemen and all those kinds of folks, please remember our Coast Guard who are out there helping the fishermen and the boaters all season long. Uh, these folks need to find housing too. So I thank you. Thanks. And, and as you know, we, we've taken note of, not only of them, but of, there's, a, there's a face to people who need affordable housing. There's a lot of them that people wouldn't actually imagine uh, would be, be needing that. But we, just to recap, we have teachers, firefighters, police, Coast Guard. So that's that's why we're doing what we're doing. But we need to actually address that too in the future. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, anyone else for public comment? All right. Uh, as you no doubt uh, have heard uh, Chris has departed uh, the town and uh, Joe Powers is the acting town administrator right now for those people who don't know who he is. Uh, he's sitting here. Uh, the Board of Selectmen have to actually confirm uh, that appointment, but he's, he's indicated he wants to uh, partake and that's the way the uh, bylaw reads. Uh, so that would be great. Um, but we do need to reorganize. We would have needed to reorganize anyway. I just got to re remind everybody we're still operating on our home rule charter. And our home rule charter talks about reorganizing every year at the first meeting after the beginning of the fiscal year, which is July 1st. Okay. So even if we reorganize now, this is not for a full year. It only get, it's only effective until June 30th. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, we are absent. Uh, Chris, but we're also uh, absent the officers. I mean, so we could start off with uh, the chair position. Can I make a motion? Or I'd like to make a motion? Sure, Judith. Um, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Don Howell as chair and Brendan Lowney as vice chair, if you both would be amenable to that. No. Is that? One of us has to actually. <laughs> Or do I just make one motion at a time? One. It would one be one easier time. because uh, neither of us can. Well, right. It would be bad for him to actually uh, second my own nomination. And I'm thinking so Brendan I'd feels like the same way. <laughs> I'd like to make him uh, to nominate Don Hall as chair. Do make I hear a second? Mr. Chairman? Yes. If, if I might make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Um, Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that right now you're the vice chair, I'm the clerk, and there, and there is no chairman. I would suggest um, that if we each moved up unit chair. We don't have to worry too 
might want it. But if if that is that 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 potentially works, um, and then we just need one election. Yeah. No, we'd still need the other the confirmation, even if we moved up. But I, I hear what you're saying, Larry. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm just concerned about the proximity. Are, are you okay with staying involved? Because you can't really s step in. Um, if, in fact you were, if, in fact, you were not going to be there, that, that would fall to the um, clerk, all the, way I, the way I read it. But um, I'd, be I'd be prepared to step in. Um, and it's only, for a couple, it's only for a couple of meetings anyhow. Um, and I suspect um, Brendan would be um, uh, Brendan would be a good choice. Uh, he um, exhibits um, a knowledge of of housing and a knowledge of of how the systems work on Cape Cod, and I think he'd be uh, he'd be an excellent choice at this point in time. You don't have to sell me. We were already prepared to. What to mean, make him vice as vice chair. chair. So, yes, yes, he would be eminently qualified. So, But we still need to do the nominations and go down. So uh, it was a nomination for me to be chair. It needs a second, and then we can vote on that and then do the vice chair in the manner you're discussing. Can Larry uh, I do think, that? I think Larry was, was still sticking with everyone just stepping You can't. Up. Well, but then we do election, and we just step up in that. Yeah, that, well, that's I what I was thinking. Kind of the same thing, where we and I'm fine with that, but yeah. we still have to actually vote Understood. on Understood. all of them. But Understood. so why don't we do it in that in the way Larry suggested? If it's okay with you, Brennan. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, but we still have a nomination for for okay. me for chair, and it needs a second. But can Larry vote long distance? Is that allowed? Yeah, yeah, sure okay. he can. Good. Absolutely. Do I hear a second? So Larry seconding. Larry seconding. All right. Any other nominations? Or? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Now, um, I move Larry Brophy uh, to be vice chair. I'll second that. OK. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And Brendan Lowry, I'd like to, to move uh, as clerk of the Affordable Housing Trust. Any second? I'll second that. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any other? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Technically, Mr. Chairman, you can just say that I register myself as I. I think you have to have a you have to have a full vote on each one. All three votes count. They're all what unanimous, so that's fine with me. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Thanks, Larry. All right. We have the approval of minutes, which I kind of skipped. Uh, has everybody had an opportunity to look at them? Minutes be approved as published. All right. It's been a, a motion and a second to approve the minutes as published. Any further discussion? Chairman, I'll be abstaining. Okay. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Let's poll. Aye. 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 And, Aye. Okay. And one abstention, so it's 401. Um, one of the things I'm going and you'll be seeing that as the agenda goes on, one of the things I want to I, I get to is following process, uh, which means more people are involved with things uh, uh, than heretofore. But um, while the chair has the authority to sign the grant agreements, I have m made a conscious decision that that requires the to approve any document prior to the chair signing it. So with that, um, the agenda item is really, it's kind of odd, it's really to vote to accept money uh, that's already been voted by town meeting, but uh, I can't execute the contract to do that unless I get the CP from the Affordable Housing Trust to do that. So I have the documents here. Um, it's in the amount of $500,000, which I don't think we want to pass up. No. Mr. Brophy, would you like to make accept the grant? I would, I would move, Mr. Chairman, that we accept the amount of money into the Howard Housing Authority's accounts. I'll second that. Judith seconds it. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, Judith? Uh, yes, I. Aye. 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 And Aye. You, made, you made the motion, it would be a good idea to vote yes. Um, okay, so we've accepted that and I'll, I'll execute that document uh, before I leave today. Um, we have a letter that we've been asked uh, to support for the housing uh, authorities, $200,000 CPC request to continue the rental assistance program. Is it this year, I don't see how that, that's even possible. Yeah, but this year's process isn't done. Well, this year meaning the fiscal year that's like 20. Yeah. And then 19. Uh, I believe or 19? It's 19 and 18. We're in fiscal 20. Maybe it's 20 and 19. It's 20 and 19. Yeah, yeah. For this current year and then the coming and then the year coming up. So when it passed. How did it take a okay. year for us to get a hold of these? No idea. What, what is it? Sir? Is it this? The one that you gave us? So the balance is actually never really included this really. They're in multiple different accounts. So we're never actually reporting on a trust balance. We're reporting on balances. Oh, it is. No, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah, but they weren't available for us to do anything with until we accept the grant. Yes, we've still been getting reported figures on those numbers anyway. But in any case, hmm. we learned. This, so this was in the November packet originally, and we learned just recently that they needed an entity to contact for the previous year. Do you see the difference? That town meeting is for this fiscal year that we're in. Are very similar, but they should be slightly different. All right. Well, the other one, yeah, Article 42 versus Article 58. All right. We've we've approved Article 58. Article 42 is in the amount of $340,000, uh, and that would have been Article 42 from May 6, 2019, town meeting. I need a motion to accept that uh, grant contract. Here a second? Second. Okay, we've got a bunch of seconds. Uh, Judith? Yes. Aye. Brendan? Aye. Larry? In favor. I am? Aye. It's unanimous. Okay, so I'll sign both of those. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, but again, we're still being asked to approve a letter of support for the housing authorities. $200,000 request to the uh, Community Preservation Committee to continue the rental assistance program. I mean, one thing that we are going to be discussing in terms of what our plan of operation is, is it's not just about putting sticks in the ground and getting people in uh, to brand new buildings. Some of it's going to be rehab, some of it's going to be rental assistance buy downs, and some of it's going to be building. And in this instance, we have an opportunity to support uh, the housing authority in their request to buy down. I don't think this is the buy down. I think this is. Well, it's a rental assistance, though. Rental assistance, yeah. yeah. It's rental assistance, yeah. Which essentially. No. no we'll we'll use the nomenclature uh, uh, rental assistance, but it is a buy down ultimately because if you can't afford it, this augments that. Because there was a buy down program called a buy down. I that just want to make sure that there's. That was from no 2009, I believe, but that's no longer. Whatever motion we get, whatever motion we get should uh, indicate that we're in support of the Housing Authority's $200,000 request for rental assistance program. Yes. I will make a motion to um, support the letter of support for the uh, Housing Authority's rental assistance request for $200,000. I will second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Judith? Aye. Fred? Aye. Larry? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous also. Um, planning discussion. We're going as I said, I want to I want to be able to uh, step back for a second because we, uh, we're like shoot aim fire uh, in in the way we're operating. Uh, we need rules. 
we need to have, be more collaborative about how those rules are set up because the priorities that were set kind of things that I discussed, like uh, whether it's a buy down or it's uh, a rehab or housing, where they fit in terms of what we want to carve out for them, but we also need to know within those categories how we're going to be able to determine priorities so that we don't get into trouble, frankly. I mean, at some point in time, however, in approving or not approving, we're going to find ourselves in a dilemma because somebody's going to litigate that. Um, eventually, we're going to have uh, future workshops we've discussed uh, before, but I'm going to reiterate. It may be that we do things at night, you know, we do certain things on other days. It's really going to boil down to how do we get as much participation in this trust in discussions and how can we get more people in the room to actually discuss what it is we're up to. Uh, and if that means we got to take the show on the road, that, me that means we got to take the show. So, uh, so pretty much that's what that's about. Uh, the member reports, we do this on the board of selectmen. I think it's really important uh, from meeting to meeting. If you're up to something, if you're up to something, if Larry's up to something, or if he, or if you have something that you really are burning to talk about, it should be agenda in the future. There is also going to be an agenda building. Uh, uh, item on every single agenda from here on in uh, so that we can get to that point. Uh, but the way I look at this, I don't want a cult of personality. It really should be neutral so that we're looking in this room 10 years from now and maybe all different people, but we're still plugging along because we've developed rules and we've got things that we're doing and they're very successful. Uh, that I, I don't anticipate we're, we get into a situation at all in the, in, in the future, we were surprised that it happened because somebody had a big discussion with another committee that we were completely unaware of. Right. It re we all need, we're on the bus together, mm -hmm. and, and and that's the way I'd like to operate. Especially since the public has every right to know what we're do what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, with that, does anybody have anything under a memory report that would roughly uh, fit that? I mean, it's, Anything that you've been thinking about or anything that you've been doing that you, you think we should be aware of? Okay. I didn't expect so, but I just wanted to let you know that that's going to be on every agenda from here on in. I just want to say that um, um, for the record that the workshops that were held um, were really excellent. <clears throat> they were really um, very helpful in seeing the big picture. and figuring out strategies so thank you guys for for that do we get much in the way of attendance in the zba nope there are still a few great opportunities coming up as well mentioned in the housing coordinator report now that mr powers is sitting next to me it's just putting a pitch in in general and i've told uh uh larry valentine this uh, also that uh, we've got a, uh, a group of people who actually have an awesome responsibility that's different from what they would normally execute each uh, meeting. Rather than just getting a bunch of people coming in and asking for variances on uh, projects, uh, they sit as the arbiter uh, for the 40B projects. And I've got a suspicion that at least some of them are not overly familiar with that uh, at the risk of having them all get angry at me I'm going to say something that I personally observed I know that in the past that at least one or two members have questioned uh, something on the order of and I'm paraphrasing it wait a second these guys are getting to do more than they would normally get to do I don't quite understand how are they doing this well they're doing it because that's the way 40b works uh, it's a way when you're under the 10 percent goal to get there, and it's it's very specific. It's got rules, and they have to follow those rules. And it's not like I don't think that's fair. Uh, and they wouldn't have been able to utter that statement if they had attended this. I'm concerned, in general, from the board of uh, selectmen's perspective, that all regulatory boards take relevant uh, training, and I don't mean open meeting training or. Uh, ethics training, I mean in the relevant statutes that they exercise. Uh, 
authority over. Uh, I, we need to make, not, not you folks, because it's great that you're doing these workshops. We need to make a concerted effort that we get some fannies in the seat uh, at those things because it's really difficult to litigate this during the course of a meeting for them. They need to know going in that they have duties and responsibilities that are pretty much outlined by the state. They can't say no without a really good reason and they've got to be, they can modify things, but that's their job is to be able to come up with a successful project under 40B. And I know that Larry knows this. setback requirements and different densities and, and different methods to handle the specific zoning uh, and that's why 40B is there and it was certainly laid out that way by the state and it, it in many instances is very very good for the town and for the developer uh, and it's, it's simply a matter of knowing it. It makes life much easier for everybody concerned. Which brings me to a subcategory of this same discussion. Larry, I think you bring up a good point. I think that we need to make periodic reports. Uh, and it's handy enough that I'm on both places, uh, but to the Board of Selectmen and let them know, you know, things that uh, we're concerned about or things that we've been up to. Uh, I'm, I think that we should report to them that it's our, uh, ultimately, that it's our sentiment. Uh, it's really important that, particularly in this instance, that a regulatory board takes this kind of training uh, for the Housing Institute uh, you know, stuff so that they can get a, a good idea of what it is that they're supposed to be doing. Now, I'm not expecting you to go line by line through the statute, but I mean, I'm sure that that's part of the workshop, right? So, uh, and, I, and I suspect Kalinda and Alana can, can help us out in that respect. We've got two experts sitting right to your left. Yeah, yes, and one of them's named something else. <laughs> It's Andrea, but that's okay. I get it all the time. I've been called worse, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Joe. It's contagious. It is. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. But um, picking up on what you were just saying, <coughs> I would think that this concept ties into nice, uh, ties in nicely with what um, the Board of Selectmen were informed of um, Monday evening regarding the Board of Health. You know, there, nowadays there are more. Uh, training opportunities for regulatory bodies, and um, I'm trying to glean out where we are having walked into this uh, canoe midstream, but um, I think we're talking about Cape Housing uh, Institute and other workshops, correct? Yeah. And yeah so it's, the, it's the, the appropriate education material for those appropriate bodies, and it, it does mesh nicely with what the is looking for as far as um, really education opportunities for the volunteers that serve in these capacities. So we've seen a great example of that with Board of Health where um, I believe it's Boston University that's uh, sponsoring the program. Um, Cape Housing Institute for regulatory bodies here is equally for that particular subject matter. So the timing's perfect, the concept uh, matches everything and we can continue to emphasize the benefit of that. And that's kind of the purpose of this meeting in general. I mean, I've pretty much told each of you that if we wanted to step back and then look at where we're at, where we, where we need how we need to get there. Uh, that's one of the components right there. Is it, this is kind of like foundational stuff. I think it was awfully uh, precipitous of us to start voting on things when we really didn't have you know, our ducks in order about where we to do things. But in the meantime, we have the opportunity before we actually get he heavy into some of these things to get the, Z uh, the ZBA fully trained so that when we do have a 40B project, that they're up and running with the relevant training that they need. And you'll see a couple of other things like that on this agenda. Um, all right. We did get uh, the affordable housing trust balances. Uh, I might add that it's, uh, we're now going to be getting them directly from the finance director, and it was probably a good thing because I understood that uh, Chris was actually developing for us but he couldn't certify the funds. Uh, the finance director can. So the fund balances that we're getting are certified balances. And she just gave us them uh, today. You wanna, Andrea, you wanna speak to that? I have a copy in front of me. Okay. Okay, looking at this for the first 
I told her that she didn't necessarily need it for today. I just wanted to make sure that that's something we always have in every single meeting so that we know all the trial balances for everything. So it looks like the only expenditures thus far have been our own invoices for housing consulting services. And um, we haven't expended the action plan contract funds, but maybe those have been encumbered. So our total right now is 868355 with the CPP applications that have been approved. While we're on that subject, I just want to make sure that Andrea and Polinda know that I've had a, a discussion uh, with Joe about uh, finding that contract uh, executed second year. Uh, it has been done. It was voted. We're just trying to secure a copy of it so that Carol gets it uh, in her office. I've assured her that it was voted. So you can continue to submit your invoices. Okay, we need you here. Um, moving Habitat, the town decided to pass on um, running the, the resale, and at this point, there is no further action needed by the trust, and there's an email in your packet to that effect, so that matter is tied up. Um, an update on the three parcels that have been in play. Um, there was an expectation based on the last meeting that a solicitation for a survey to, to, to engineers to get a survey done on the Oak Street parcel would have gone out. However, um, that was based on the assumption that I would be writing the scope of work, and we realized pretty quickly that that was not the best course of action given my lack of engineering experience. So, um, Sean, do you want to speak to where we are on that? Yes. As soon as I left our meeting, I went downstairs and talked to Mr. Powers and, uh, about that dilemma. We're, we're going to meet up uh, with Griffin Ryder um, because we need the statement of work before we can actually put the RFP out. And I understand exactly what you're saying. He would have the expertise. We're going to figure out where we can find time to do that. And I'll report back to you at that point. But that's, that's an action item uh, for us right now downstairs. So as a reminder, we had gotten an estimate from Bowler Engineering, but it came out to over $13,000. It's important we're going to actually have more discussions about that. Uh, I'm not sure what, how big the bread box is. Is it bigger than the bread box? Is it smaller? Because the hydrology uh, inspections, we don't know what we can put on upland there because we don't know what upland we've got. Uh, it's really important. It, I know everybody in the trust knows this, uh, that I had feelings on this, and I'm pretty sure you all had the same feelings. If it's true that we can only put one or two houses there, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with Larry. We cut bait, we move, we uh, find somebody to do that, we move on to another project. But we don't know that for sure. And I, why would we abandon it without knowing what it can max that, be maxed out to be? So this is really important to us. And I would, uh, I would urge everybody to just sit tight and not do anything with that property until we know what it is we can do. Because we went from, like, Let's put 100 houses there, too. Let's put one. Uh, right. and I don't know that either one of those was entirely true, and we were just speaking out of no knowledge whatsoever, which is something, again, that I don't want to do. I would rather not operate as the people's court here, take an action and find out, uh, we got to reverse the action next month. So we're going to try to be a little bit more methodical about you know, where we're at and what, what it is we're doing. Of course, we'll always do the process for any parcel to make sure that we fully understand the capacity of the site before any decisions are made. You can go on with your report. Okay, great. Um, on Schutzen Road, we are waiting for Bowler Engineering's report on that survey. Um, we had originally thought to invite them to this meeting, but given the reorganization of offices and just some other things that need to be discussed, we decided to push it off. I have not heard yet that they do have a formal report already completed, but my expectation is that given the 60-day timeline, um, they should be more than ready for the January meeting. So um, shall we invite them to attend the January meeting and report on their findings? What do you think, Joe? Sure. No, I'm just I'm serious. Yeah. From well, an administration standpoint. Well, I, I'm, I'm the meeting uh, later in the month was canceled, so the next one would be in January. Yeah. Sixteenth, I believe, if if that's the date you choose, mm. which I think you're going to be discussing. Yeah. We'll we'll discuss the date, but you yeah. you want to have them in. Larry, you want to have them in on January. Done with me. 
everybody okay in concept yeah. dep pending mm -hmm. the actual date date? Yeah, the 16th, right? Okay. We would, if I can, based on that question then, what would the expectation be for the time frame regarding Oak Street? Um, so depending on when the solicitation goes out, I believe at least three weeks to get bids back and then you need to review them. I think so we, we're talking depends. invitation for bids, is that the? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm it's assuming at least we're still a couple months out. I would agree with that. Did, I missed the last meeting. Did we actually, we did vote to proceed with uh, uh, consulting uh, company to build up uh, the plan of action? We voted to execute the contract with Jennifer Goldson's company. Okay, I, I just wanted to get that out there because it wasn't here. <laughs> yes, and so that's another thing that's not on the list. Well, let me just get through these. Okay. Um, so that's the rear Simpson Road, that's moving along. And by the way, while it feels like progress is slow, this is actually very, very typical for affordable housing development, especially when you meet only once a month. Um, so we're actually right on, on schedule. Um, now, D is not a situation that I have been intimately involved with. My understanding is that a third party came in and scooped up the parcel. Um, I believe the owner of the parcel actually increased the price at some point or another. And so even though you have um, done a joint application to purchase it for part housing and part open space, that application is no longer viable because the parcel has already been purchased. Mm -hmm. And did we ever see the uh, appraisal for that or no? Or now it's a moot point, so. We didn't get that far. We didn't get that far, okay. It, it's disappointing in a certain way because this, this was a great opportunity to show that you didn't have to have either or. Uh, open space or affordable housing. And it was, it, it was nice to see the uh, Harwich Conservation Trust uh, embrace the concept of a joint project, uh, which is something we have not seen, and it would have been a great demonstration of how the, they're not uh, uh, diametrically opposed uh, goals and objectives. You can save what's worth saving, you, you build on what's worth building on. And Elaine and I have had that conversation, and I, everybody's on that page. So while this may not have happened, and it would have been a grand project, we shouldn't just close the door to the opportunity that may show up at some point. Mm -hmm. Joe, did you have? No, I was just confirming. I did speak with the um, community preservation chairman right after that information was uh, presented. The application was immediately pulled, so it is no longer pending, and he also confirmed it could not be brought up for reconsideration. It's okay. completely off the table. Now, we had actually submitted that as a co-applicant, right? That's my understanding. I would suggest. What the chair confirmed is when he had received information and he directed something to be filed, once it was filed, the con Community Preservation Committee considered that to be no longer a valid. Well, he can, he can push it aside, but since we are the ones who submitted it, I think it's probably appropriate for us to take a vote to pull it from consideration from our side, because we're the ones who requested it. Sure. I think it completes the record. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I'm saying. They're not going to consider it anyway, but I think it would be a cleaner idea if we just withdrew the proposal from the CPC. So does anybody have a motion to do that? I would move, Mr. Chairman, that we eliminate Deacon's Folly for our consideration. I second that. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, Judith? Aye. Brendan? Aye. Larry? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. So yes, an update on the action plan. A uh, contract with the consultant has been partially executed and we're working on getting it fully executed. Um, Jennifer Goldson was not available for the original December 19th meeting date, but she is as of now available for January 16th if that is when you meet. Um, but she is eager to kick off the, the scope of work. So um, if the trust is interested, I can invite her to attend the January meeting and start that process. I think it's necessary, guys, because ultimately we're playing without a rule book. No, I think it's good. Yeah. I, mean, I got to point out to you that it was only two meetings ago we were asked to prioritize three commercial development projects that didn't exist. So 
we, we shouldn't find ourselves in that circumstance. There should be some sort of guidelines that we operate off of, and I believe pretty much every other trust that I'm aware of, that was the first order of business. So we're a little behind the curve on this. So yeah, the, the first meeting she could get to would be terrific. I think that's gonna be a really fabulous process for the trust and for the town overall. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. Um, a couple other things that we already touched on just as far as uh, training opportunities coming up. Um, there's a, a session seven that is part of the Lower Cape Housing Institute, which is called a post-institute town wrap-up. Um, and so this is different from the rest of the Housing Institute in that it's an individualized, professionally facilitated session offered on a town-by-town -town basis. And so um, Harwich has a post-institute town wrap-up coming up. In the past, it was only for people who had gone through the Housing Institute. Um, we have since opened it up a little bit to make sure that the conversations are a little more robust. Um, and we have a town captain in each town that's helping to recruit people to make that a useful conversation. The purpose of the conversation is to help people build relationships and align themselves along the town's housing production goals across boards and committees, typically smaller It's gonna be on December 16th. That's a Monday, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in the morning here at the community center. And I, I can email out uh, a flyer for that. Please event. do. Yep. Um, we are also open to suggestions about topics to discuss. Again, this is a tailored, individualized session just for Harwich. So please, the more involvement we can get, the better. And of course, we always have refreshments. That I can go to. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, some other opportunities we have coming up. Next week, we have our Introduction to Form-Based Code training. This is part of our slate of advanced trainings that we offer throughout the year. This particular was actually designed, it doesn't exist, hadn't existed before. It was designed specifically for Harwich, um, based on last year's Housing Institute, where the Cape Cod Commission brought in an architect from Union Studio to talk about their community resiliency by design project. And uh, participants were really excited about learning more about form-based code. And so we have pulled together some really great speakers. We have someone from the commission coming, as well as someone from Union Studio. And then we also have the town planner in Somerville who has some great examples of suburban and rural form-based code implementation. So that's next week here in Harwich on Thursday, December 9th, no, that's 12th, 12th, yes, 12th, thank you, at five o'clock at the Harwich Community Center. Um, if anyone is interested, just email me and I'll sign you up, it's free, refreshments. Um, it also would be really great for planning board members to attend if you'd like to invite those. Um, and like I said, just email me if you're interested. Is that open to the public? Is that a... So all of our trainings are technically open to the public, but they're really designed to serve elected and appointed municipal town staff. Okay. I'm is just wondering about distribution of the information. I was just going to say, is it possible to make sure that Charlene invites the planning board members? I think she probably has, but I can remind her. How about the Z ZBA? I mean, we, we try to invite everyone that we possibly have from, but attendance right now from Harwich is pretty <coughs> slim, which is unfortunate considering Harwich has for it. They, could only, they, they could only say no if you, if, if you could, if you or Palinda could actually ask her to uh, invite all of the members of the planning board and all the members of the ZBA yep. by email. I, th I think it's important. I know Larry's been on the ground with that. I, I served as vice chair of the planning board and he served as the chair. It's, you got to make sure everybody knows what's going on in terms of state statutes because they're changing. Does anyone have questions about what form-based code is? Um, and then the last thing is a reminder, well, the last thing, uh, a reminder that session four of the Housing Institute was postponed, and it was a session called Zoning for Housing to Protect uh -huh. Open Space. It actually would have been great for the yeah. quality situation, 
Um, so this is our zoning assessment. Again, we, we pushed it, we postponed it to January, and we're offering it now as an advanced training. It's on January 16th. <coughs> um, it would be really fabulous for planning board members, of course, mm, um, and you're January. all invited. And that's kind of focusing on open space residential development to kind of dispel this idea that there needs to be tension between housing and open space. And actually, there are some really amazing examples of uh, towns using property to do both. In fact, the more you can cluster developments together, the more you can protect open space effectively. Makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense when you think about it. So that's another free advanced training that's coming up in January. And just to piggyback on what you were saying before, um, it's really important to us to not just offer trainings on topics that we think are interesting, but to make sure that they come from the communities that we serve, including the town of Harlech. And so this next year, we're going to make a concerted effort to try and get feedback from all of the housing bodies like yourselves at the town to learn about what you think you need so that we can make sure we're putting together topics um, that come from, from the town. So we would love to come speak to the trust about that and the Board of Selectmen and the CPC and you know, we'll do the best we can to get to all the committees. But if you can be collecting that kind of feedback and thinking about that, we can make sure we offer customized topics. What's the attendance been at things that would have been appropriate for regulatory bodies? Like how many people? Yeah. Well, I can't tell you for every single thing we offer, but if you give me a second, I can tell you how many people serve in Harlot. So we've served 18 people in the town of Harlot. I'm talking about at, at any given meeting. At any given meeting? I would say five or so. Then I've got to ask the question here. Maybe we can try a different approach. Uh, you got seven people on a planning board, right, Larry? Larry, Larry put down the pina colada. Yes, there are. Okay, so, and the ZBA ha has even more. Uh, what would be the prospect of coming to a, a scheduled meeting and you do a presentation to the meeting? As, as a main agenda item? Absolutely. I, 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 from my point of view, I, I don't know their agendas, but you know, it usually um, quiets down a little bit uh, this time of the year for the planning board, so it's a good time to do planning and your presentations from other folks that, that would like to um, get their ideas across to the planning board. So I think generally they'd be uh, quite willing to listen to another presentation <laughs> It's a good time of the year to do it. That's kind of what I was thinking. Maybe we could try a different approach because then you're getting the right five people or the right seven people because they're captive audience. They're at their own meeting. Yeah, I mean, I think just for um, efficacy, it's always nice to open it up if you just have like a joint meeting with a neighboring town planning board. but. It just needs to come from the committee itself. We can't be the ones offering training that people don't want or need. Um, so it, it just has to go both ways. I think that we do want to establish a better relationship with these boards and committees and making sure that they're feeling heard and we're offering what they want. But yes, absolutely. We're actually thinking about doing more tailored trainings during our next fiscal year, so that would fit nice. i got to think about how to reach out to them, but I think that's probably at least the initial solution because if we pique their interest, and they want to get a bigger presentation or something more from you folks, they'll know what they're asking for because they've at least gotten the broad-based stuff. Uh, I doubt that any of them have really, especially the ZBA, I doubt any of them have taken any real you know, regulatory courses. Everybody yeah, takes it, open meeting it would, courses. It would be to a real, I, I, I'm sorry I butted in, Mr. Chairman. Oh, not at all. together for a meeting, um, it might even be an aha moment because the two of them could work reasonably well together and it's important up to do that. It really would really would be advantageous, I think. Read my mind. Kind of what I was thinking about. Years ago we used to do that. The <laughs> Board of Health would come in and speak to the planning board and uh, the, but this is even better. I mean if we could get both boards to do a jointly posted 
have you come in to present to them, that, that would be, is it probably, be, I, I'm just sensing that they don't feel that they have any ownership in this thing at all, that you holding something in. And, and I think, you know, to that extent, that if you were to talk about that, I, I know it, it, it's a big group of people, and I, I noticed Art sitting in the room too. <coughs> yes, he is. But the, the, housing, um, the housing authority would be really good. That, that makes a, a trifecta, quite frankly. And the housing committee would make a card for <laughs> The housing authority or the housing committee? He just inadvert inadvertently said four things, but okay. <laughs> rather than three. <laughs> the, housing, the housing authority, the housing trust, the planning board, and the ZBA, that would be. And the housing and committee. And the housing committee. It's a mega yeah. meeting, but you get them all together to do the same thing. I have, I, I have arts back. It, it, it's a, that's yet another committee. And open space. And open space, that's true. Yeah. That I'm actually going to discuss. It, if we're done with the report. Yes. Okay, thank you. One more thing. One more thing. You, provide, you provide the cheeseburgers, everybody would be happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the coladas. <laughs> I've already got them. Oh, I've yeah, I thought so. Yes, go ahead. So we received a notice from DHPD, Department of Housing and Community Development, um, to update the town's <coughs> SHI, subsidized housing inventory, and this mm -hmm. is a process where the town can add or renew eligible units um, in the subsidized housing inventory. And there's a deadline for this process. It's on January 17th of next year, and I've already um, spoken with uh, John Stewart so that we can kind of review both of our subsidized housing inventory lists. Who's taking the lead on the tasking for that? Just to say that we'll be working on this. The last time they did this was in 2017. It used to be annual. It's not so annual anymore. Um, but hopefully the number will go up slightly before the census just completely changes everything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we got two more items. One was added recently, but the f before that, the, the first thing is agenda building. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody has anything right now that they'd want to be on the next agenda. Um, and feel free. I don't I like the fact that you're adding that member report. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a great thing. It's an open discussion that we don't have at meetings, which is important. You have to really throw some ideas around and what are we missing, what are we not doing, what mm -hmm. are other towns, and just bringing it together. We just seem to, to, we didn't have that before, and I really like, I like that idea. I do too. Now, is the date okay? Uh, the 16th? For me, yes. I think Jane. I think I'm at a comp away. We have the comp MMA the week after, or is it a week before? No, it's the week after. Or it's a week after. Okay. So yeah. it can't be after that. My schedule is perfect, Mr. Chairman. You pick a date, I'll <laughs> I, I don't That's think I'm going to. It just isn't. It really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to watch the palm Feel trees good. as they waft in the breeze. Um. The reason I'm saying that is. And then I know Art wanted us to go to theirs, but uh, I reread our, uh, the bylaw that created the Housing Trust. We are supposed to have you come in to have a discussion uh, with us annually. I mean, that, that's one of the things that I noticed that we weren't doing, but we are supposed to be doing. Uh, so I'd like, like to do that in either the January or the February meeting that we cross posted and come in together to have a single meeting because Larry doesn't seem to want you to be at the one that has all four. <laughs> but the, Larry, the housing committee is supposed to be part of our annual uh, uh, assessment of where we are and where we need to go according to the bylaw. Well, according to the bylaw that created it. <laughs> Just pour another drink. <laughs> and I'm on a state the 14th, 15th, and 16th at a conference, so I, I may be able to call in, but I'm, I may not. I, I am a, a lot more flexible uh, in this than we have been in the past. 
Is it is it far Friday? more important to me, and I'm just stating this outright, it is far more important for me to get one, public access, and two, the fullest participation uh, the trust. Uh, it's not my, it is not my intention to uh, pull the train out of the station, whoever gets on the train before that is fine, and everybody else can wait until the next meeting. Uh, so I would prefer to have meetings scheduled with a maximum number of people that are on this trust can participate. If we can be flexible with the day and move it to the next day. No, we have an invitee, so we gotta be oh. able to make sure that that's okay. Yeah. I am not wedded. It's not like I've blocked out two hours on a Thursday afternoon on the third Thursday, and that's the only time I'm ever gonna be able to see you. I'm not wedded to that, personally, and I'm not sure any of you guys are either. Can't be for work. Larry reasons. can turn on the computer and pour a drink for work on a reasons. Tuesday. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Thursdays it works for me. Um, you know, I could do Fridays. Well, I'm not talking in general. Right, right now, I'm just talking about this particular oh, this meeting. One. Yeah, I, I can, we can move around to what. Is there any wiggle room on the part of everybody to sure. be able to push that in a couple of days in some direction? I I could do that Monday if you want to do it during the day, or that Monday evening or Friday. Monday evenings, I'm somewhat tired. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. So is sorry. Joe. Sorry. Sorry. Or you, Friday the, during the day. You're gone the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Yeah. So and that doesn't happen every month, but. Monday's okay with me. I'm not sure what it is for everybody else. In the, you know, afternoon for that particular Monday, it'd be the 13th. Mm -hmm. We can, do that. can we get back to you though? Because I want to. There's no point in holding the meeting if we can't get the same people into the meeting. We have a lot of people to coordinate. Yeah. Yeah. So, if we could tentatively schedule it for the 13th and then have you verify that everybody can still do that, otherwise we can email and, s and try to give an invitation to see when we could get them. Are you thinking two o'clock? Two o'clock. That's tentatively is good with me. The 13th. Okay. Yeah, same here. All right. Thank you. So, as I said, the other thing that needs to be added on agenda building to have a discussion about when a real date can occur for, if you can do the 13th, that would be fine with me too, but I don't want to rush things. I'd rather be right than fast uh, in this because we're still in the infancy here. If we screw up in the beginning, it's going to be really hard to recover from it because who are looking at this and wanting to make sure that we're doing the right thing f uh, for the town and for them. And so I would rather get this all set up right than I would race to do something and then find out that, whoops, that wasn't a good idea. Uh, and, and speaking of that, we're coming up on the next agenda uh, but for that. But I'm anything else? Myself from that, yes. But anything else on agenda building? If you don't have any idea right now, Please make sure you email me and uh, Andrea, uh, whoever that other person was that uh, Larry said is here. <laughs> or Polinda. I, I know that, but uh, <laughs> you created a new name here. I get my merge sometimes. <laughs> it's okay, Barry. We all do that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, all right, so can we move off the agenda then? The final, yeah, the final thing that was just added, uh, based on a letter that we received, and uh, Brendan has recused himself. Recuse myself from that, so. so, I don't expect to actually respond to the content of the letter because this is another uh, point at which we could be doing the people's court kind of thing, where in one hour we get presented, we vote, and we move out, and then we find we made another mistake. Uh, it's a fine building. It, it's, we're talking about the building that's uh, next to Holy Trinity Church. It may have some use. We may have a piece of land that it might be able to go on, but this is just way too fast for us to be able to ascertain that the inside of the building's fine, it could be moved, we got property, we got money. Uh, it's way ahead of where we should be. I would suggest, and I've had a preliminary discussion with the chair of the uh, Historic Historical Commission, that as an organization, as the trust, 
that we vote to urge them to invoke uh, a one-year uh, teardown moratorium, during which time we would be able to pursue what it is that building really is, what could be done with it, and whether or not, by that time, we might have a clearer idea of what's going on with Oak Street, too. I don't know, but the point is that we don't really have anything other than somebody begging us, take a building and put it somewhere, okay? We'll give you $20,000 if you just take it off our hands and we can move it. Uh, from what, Mr. Chairman, I'll chip in from 1,600 miles away, but from my point of view, I, I, I would have to uh, agree with you. Um, and I would, I would add in that I suspect, um, from what I hear, um, a lot of, there's, there's a number of neighbors that would like to keep it. But having said that, uh, a year gives you some breathing room and lets everybody sit down and evaluate it. Um, yes, there's pros and cons, but it's probably a good building. But in the grander scheme of things, um, it seems to me that the building is 26 feet tall. And um, my mathematics tells me that a 21-foot um, telephone and electric wire all over town makes it a little awkward unless you're going to have a sandwich home. So you got to look that over carefully. Outside of that, the year's moratorium will let you answer most of the questions and, and give it a good, uh, a good look-see. That's, that's my way in. Yeah, and there's a couple of house-moving companies. I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but they have a mechanism of lifting the wires. But uh, yeah. we need time to be able to vet all of that. Everything we've just discussed, we don't know any of the answers to any of it. So I think it would be kind of presumptuous of us to be uh, spending money to move something where we don't know where we're moving it to. Joe. Yeah, and, and you know, then, you, then you're going to have uh, with little or, no, little or no worry that we're moving it to a place that we have land that's, you know, in the middle of nowhere, that's one thing. But if it's close to somebody, they're probably going to want to weigh in. So it, uh, a, a little time to, to breathe, uh, for some breathing room. There, uh, is this matter properly before the historic historical district commission, and is there an application or uh, a hearing relative to demolition delay? And they actually had one person that was urging them to take action to invoke that earlier because they wanted to, uh, the uh, time clock to start earlier so that they could end it earlier and actually do something. And I presume that meant tearing it down. Yeah, they that, have. That, that's the reason why the. Uh, Something else might come up where the town um, finds some other use for it. So uh, I think the breathing room, the, the one year breathing room, is a, is a good way to do it. And into Joe's question, they have taken no action, but it is pending, and they would actually appreciate a letter of recommendation from us about what it is that we would recommend that they do based on our circumstances. I, I, I get the feeling that they would look positively upon our recommendation for a one year demolition. That's my guess. I would, I, would be, I, I would make that motion if anybody would like to second it. Well, if I may, Mr. Chair, I just had a few more questions on this. Just Sure. We could do that in discussion or not. Sure. That's fine. Uh, Judith, you want to second uh, that we send a letter urging them to invoke a one-year uh, demolition delay? And so that we might be able to... To the Historic Historical Commission, so that uh, the letter is saying that it'll give us some time to be able to determine the viability of moving it. And then, and I also wanted to, um, and procedurally, Larry, I need a little help here because I don't know all. Well, um, I, I would like to make a motion that we, as a committee, support the idea of making this part of our bigger plan that we do look at houses that people might be thinking of tearing down to build a new house. Uh, can can yeah. we wait until Does we do this? Or I don't know. No, you can make such a motion. I just, if, if we could do this one as a one-off and then get. Well, I, I, well could I it be part and parcel of the same letter? Yeah, you know, we're talking about two different things. When somebody wants to take a house down and tear down, um, that's a little bit different because we're looking here at a, at a home that has potential of historic value in then and only then can they put a, a one-year hold on it. I see what so you're saying. Somebody yep. wants, if somebody, yeah, if somebody wants to tear it down, a house that's 40 years old, um, we really
really can't do very much about it. Certainly not the historic commission. So the one year is for, for elderly homes that uh, have some historic value. Okay, Joe. Um, so is there going to be a motion? You want to reframe my remarks to the motion, or are we still doing general discussion? We could do general discussion about right. it. So um, having having served fairly recently on the <coughs> Historical Commission, Historic District Commission, I'm familiar with our demolition delay by law. My questions are, was an application for demolition filed, and is it a pending matter before the HDHC? Yes and yes. Uh, and are we the only body that's being asked to weigh in on this? We were not asked. And that, that's the letter so that's came directly question. from the applicant, not from right, the right. So that I can actually shed some light on that because I was a recipient, uh, as acting administrator, of a request for this uh, entity to weigh in on that. And my questions are: I, I, I forwarded it to the planner so that it could be on and incorporated in this discussion. However, um, procedurally, I think we as a town want to take our direction from our other regulatory bodies such as the HCHDC, I'm going to say it wrong every time I say it, but that, that historical committee, um, because the way that um, I remember our demolition delay process, they would, we're looking for any and all parties to weigh in on whether the demolition should be delayed. And I want to make sure that as a town, we're having that board reach out to as many regulatory authorities, interested parties, and others I wouldn't want it to be that we started this um, simply f for the purpose of whether or not we want it, me, we being housing trust. So I think it would be appropriate if the regulatory body that has responsibility for demo delay initiate action that we could respond to. Hey, I, me, I, I'm, I'm, it's just been a really long day. Are, are you saying that you want the housing, I mean the uh, historic? To reach out. To, to reach out to us to if, support if, if their motion? No, if, um, what I, then thank, thank you for the opportunity to clarify. <laughs> Sorry. If, um, if the property owner, so called, okay. is meeting with the historical commission and the historical commission is considering invoking their demo delay bylaw, it would be appropriate for the historical commission to reach out to planning, zoning, health, any number of regulatory bodies or agencies of the town to weigh in on their consideration of whether or not demolition should be delayed or enacted in any way. So that this matter came before us because I received through administration a request from an interested party related to the church. I think we need to take the onus to make sure that everything is properly proceeding through the through our boards. So I would be looking for the Historical Commission to reach out to, to Affordable us. Housing Trust and others. Um, you know, I'm not just speaking beyond this capacity, I'm trying to right. speak in my capacity uh, in administration to say that, that all interested parties are aware of it. Um, I understand the, the goal of trying uh, for property owners or others to try to expedite demolition delay, but it's a year. And so we need to know when the year starts and what we're asked to be uh, to do. And in, um, yeah. Before we get into the substantive matter of could we use it, I think there's a bigger, big, bigger process out there. And I just want to make sure that we're trying to tie together all the agencies. Can I just pitch one thing here? The letter that we would send is we have received a letter requesting us to, uh, to make this request of you. Uh, because we've, we have been given the opportunity to move the house, but we are not in a position to make that judgment without more time. Understand that you've had an application for demolition delay in front of you, and we would support that. And then you and I could change hats and approach <laughs> them separately on the issue that you're talking about, which is it's really appropriate for you to ask other parties, too. It's not just the housing trust. Yeah, I just feel like my hat's really, really big. So I want to make sure I'm mindful of all the boards that I connect with. And you can either abstain. I thank you for that opportunity, and perhaps that will be the case. And can I just ask one quick clarification, too? Time-wise, we're 
it's not like if we don't get <coughs> all the paperwork in and the, it's not like they're going to tear it down in six weeks kind they of couldn't thing. they couldn't okay. and, and we have we have the letter that we have, and they asked us to agenda it, and I asked everybody to put it on the agenda, which is why you have it in front of you right now. I don't think by itself uh, us writing a letter is, is a problem, but I take what Joe's saying seriously, and he's absolutely right. It's more than just us uh, that may be involved in this. Uh, there may be other actions. There may be other people right. uh, or right. stakeholders right. who have interest. I don't know what that is. but. Insofar as they have offered to us to pay us twenty thousand dollars to help defray the cost of moving it, and please take this. And I'm just taking the narrow view that it's not really about the demo delay. It's more about you know, we need time, and the demo delay would give us that time. Understood. So that's kind of how I'm. Mm -hmm. looking at this. I agree. Yeah. So there is a motion to send such a letter. I mean, uh, uh, I'm presuming that that motion also was to uh, have us draft that and for the uh, chair to sign? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I understand what Joe is saying. You know, it, it, the last thing we want to do is tie the uh, shires down for a year. And, you know, three months down the lane, down the, down the road, we don't want it. So then they've already put the, the one-year delay on it problematic to get rid of it if they want to get rid of it. Um, so I think what, what uh, the chairman is saying is that, you know, it conditioned the letter that you, you have all, all of the boards look at it and, and make sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're not asking for a demolition delay and putting everybody in an awkward position because once the demolition delay is on, we're effectively the only ones that can lift it. Can I ask Then, then how about it, the appropriateness of changing that motion to we have in front of us a request to take action to acquire and move a building to another location simply don't have the time to be able to make the judgment on and as one of the stakeholders in this we would need more time to take such an action i understand that you have a demolition delay and that's all we would say you know in in that you have such a request in that letter and say I was afraid we were going to be so excited we were just going to say we got money we got land we got a house we can do well, it I do feel that way quite frankly but I just don't know how long it takes to to do a in this size and age of a house find out about the movie I mean I can't imagine it it takes more than six to eight weeks and I'm sure we've got some interest. That's the point, is that yeah. we could send that letter to the... Uh, the inspection is already done and interest, other people are interested in it. But if we send such a letter, it'll put us on record that we are interested, but we don't know about the details about whether we can or can't. Sure. And it would give us the opportunity to say, would you like to invite us over to take a look at the place uh, so that we can determine whether it's even appropriate. My guess is, given the square footage of it, it might be possible to make that into a duplex, too. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it probably would if you have to saw the top off. It's probably pretty easy. <laughs> and they do that. I mean, it's a tradition. You seem to have a height problem here, houses. Larry. Very large yeah. houses. I, I don't, it's I not that don't, large I, a house. I don't want to restrict us, but yeah. you know, we, should look, we should look at it, but look at it with a degree of caution and you know, make sure that you know, we don't tie our hands or tie the uh, Shiasis in. Well, uh, and also don't forget the 20 people that are more than interested that I'm sure that will write letters and show up at our next meeting. Interested in, 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 in the in, outcome. I see. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I would, let me, let me say this. I would say, well, once we hear from Art, that uh, we vote on this and we take a second motion to write a letter to the owner of the property that we have determined that we have some interest but we can't determine how great that interest is without pursuing a number of different things including looking at it you know, and voting you know, to accept it as a gift. So 
that's where we're at. We took action uh, to say that we're interested in it, but we're not in a position to. We well, have the assets. We have land. We, we have money. We, we, we don't know whether we're going to do it. Discovery. That's all. Yeah. Do you do you know you don't have a copy of that inspection, do you, Larry? Yeah. Oh, you do. It was emailed out. Oh, I must have missed it. It's 17 pages long. I will look at it. Okay. So that's where, if if I might, I think that might be appropriate. We send the one letter to the uh, historic historical commission. Mm -hmm. That way you can abbreviate it. Uh, in, yeah, I can say it right. Yeah, then, then you send another letter saying we've received your initial letter and we have uh, the board, the trust has interest in this, but we will need time to be able to ascertain how much we can do. Can we set up a time to talk to you? Yeah, great. I tell, As I tell, you, tell you what, Mr. Chairman, if, if you'd like, I will draft the letter and forward it to Charlene and she can circulate it among you guys. Okay, terrific. Thank you. All right, you had something you wanted to say uh, before we vote Yeah, here. Mr. Chair, uh, Art Bowden, Housing Committee Chair. Okay. Uh, <laughs> everyone's dancing around the question here. We have, we have land, we have money, and, and we have time. But the one thing we need, I don't know if there's any, is there anyone in the room here that's moved a house? I haven't. I know that for sure. I've seen it move. We used to do oh, tons I, I, of that. I, I, I've Harwood. seen them be moved. I've seen them being getting ready to move, but I've I, never I've moved the house. Uh, the first thing we should do is, and and Judith yeah. pointed this out, and this is Cape Cod. We move houses every day. Yeah. We actually bring them from Nantucket over here, and we brought them over to Nantucket in, in, back in history. But th that's getting off the track. The first thing we should do is educate ourselves. What does it take and what's the cost to move a house. Yeah, we get we, ha look, we have a staff person that can do this right, you know, start doing some research, interview a house mover, get some hard information. So going forward, this question is going to come up again. It's not going to come up every day, but down the road we're going to pull out we're going to pull out a document and say, "Well, here here's what it's going to cost to move a house, house A or, you know, with a certain size whatever and, and a certain distance." And you're going to say, Oh my God! Forget about that. It's going to cost a million dollars. You know, I suspect it's going to be between eighty and a hundred thousand. And we have two building movers right up in North Harwich that we can uh, find that out from. But again, that's why we want the time. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's we, going to be less. But, but um, Mr. Chair, we, we don't know. We, we should find out. We should get the facts. Yeah. That's that's why that's, we're that's asking. That's the whole point of time. this. Yeah, the, the, we're all good. We're all good. But, but, the, but we're the, on the same the, page. The, the time, you know, you're talking about the time, but we don't have the facts. We, we, get, so we should get some facts. We, we, we've, we're asking for time so that we can gather all the facts together. So and that would be one of the facts. Educated decision. And, 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 and then going forward, because there's going to be more um, uh, houses that are going to come on the market that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, then, then we won't be doing this, going around chasing our tail. And yes. we'll know. We'll say, oh, if it's 100000 yeah, the house is only worth a hundred. No, no, that's not worth it. But maybe this house is. I don't know. So, just to be clear, that's Thank exactly you. why I was saying I didn't want us to vote to n today to actually move the thing because we don't know anything, uh, and we have had an immense uh, predilection towards taking actions that seem like they're good ideas, but we don't really know enough to know whether it is a good idea or not. So, I'd like to start to kick off the new year here uh, with the we're not going to do that anymore so this motion will be the first step and then another one uh, to send back <clears throat> to the property owner that would be great too Larry I will, I will draft um, one to the IHS system with, with the uh, that's the owner and, uh, and, and, and and Charlene can yeah I'll, 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 I'll send them I'll draft them both Okay, all I need is a vote so that these young ladies can go off and do the next commitment that they've got. Uh, I promised them. All right, so is there any further discussion about the, the, the letter? Hearing none. Betty. Judith? Aye. Larry? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, so I will get with Joe about how that letter looks, and then you're going to do the other letter, Larry. And <laughs> okay. Excellent. Uh, July 13th, tentatively, uh, we're shooting for uh, whether it's that art or January. January. Or, or January. Whether it's that meeting or February, we, we have to figure out wh uh, when we can hold a joint meeting with you, too. Is it during the day or night? Um, 
That's a Monday, so that would be during the day. This one's during the day. If you have, if you would rather an evening in February, then just let me know. Days, I'll be there. Okay. Nights, I might have a commitment. Okay. Well, just let me know. But during the day, it'll just be me. Okay. Anything else from the rest of the board so that Andrea can actually hear us say we're adjourned? Thank you. Thank you. Anything Mr. further? Chairman, I would move adjournment. Anybody second it? Second. Okay. <laughs> Judith? Aye. Larry? Aye. Brenda? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Palinda?